But, yeah, but on the other hand, one could say that it was like a binge type, a hoarder type of move. <laughs> okay, so I had a lot of them. So I thought that I could give away the ones, assuming that right. only five or six people would come. Right. And so uh, if more people came than that, yeah, then like they would have to, um, then they, they could take, uh, they could take, they could get them on eBay or whatever, okay. the Mattel Mind Flex, or they could, but probably not by the time that the show is this next weekend. Well, yeah. And so, well, but anyway, that's what the, it is. But the show's in 11 days, so they, so they, can, oh, do right. they can do so it. So it's like a build your own Teletron uh, control voltage generator that controls an, uh, an analog synthesizer from your mind. Uh, here's twin, here's, here's where one. Scott goes. Scott was right here. Yeah. Well, because the phone is going up and down. It, yeah. There's uh, messages on the phone. Yeah, I tried to read it, but I couldn't. So I, I kind of understand what you're saying, but not really. Let's, so you let's, uh, see, let's see what people are asking, if there's any question. Hi Kelly Hart. Hi Claire. Um, does anybody have? What's up? Right, let's see. Oh, Bri Brianne's gonna do some brandy concerts, possibly in uh, Montana, where she lives cool. right now. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Good. There's. Does anybody have a question for Robert, or or Scott, or Stephen, or we'll just keep talking? Tell me the story. <laughs> tell me the story of how you two met. I, I do. I, I just. Want, I also want to say. I think I can remember. Yeah. Well, I, well. First, I want to say when I met you at the Holiday Inn party in '98 at the first Kindercore Pop Fest, you were so nice and so gracious. And it. it I, I was probably. I was certainly a little manic, but as a Detroiter experiencing Athens for the first time, it was. It was. It was. I. I. And I appreciate your kindness. And I, and I want to say, Robert, when I met you, I think we were friended on Facebook, but you were top ten for sure, two of the most genuinely nice people I've ever met. Well, like, thank like, you, like, like, like you're, you're the other eight, though. You're, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, thank you, you're thank, like, you. thank you. So, because I, I, can, I can tell on both of you that you have no agenda. I, I tell people when I, I, I don't get it when you meet people and they. You can tell they're immediately sizing you up, uh, how they can use you. Did you guys meet in Louisiana? Yes. Um, so, okay, t do you remember when we met? Because I think I do. Was it at the radio station or was it at the college? Was it at Centenary College? Oh, no, okay, okay. So this is what I think is the, this is the origin story of the friendship of Scott and Robert. Uh, right. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so this is the origin story of what I believe is the the it's it's the, of the friendship. Yeah, it's here. We're gonna hear this. It's very romantic. So when I was in high school, um, my friends and I used to hang out with the college kids, mainly the ruffians, like Scott, but I didn't know him yet. I'd like him. Um, and uh, uh, after school every day, we would walk over to the student center on the Louisiana Tech campus in Ruston, Louisiana, where we grew up. And there was like an arcade there, and we'd go spend all our money, and then we'd go up and kind of like kick around with some of the college kids who would kind of like gather around the table in a certain corner, kind of like area of the uh, dining kind of area. And so there's always some few scattered members of this crowd there 24 7. And so that's such that it was like always occupied and, and claimed. And so um, I would see Scott there sometimes, and I was friends with some of those kids. And so I just sat down one day when you were just sitting there by yourself, and I was like, "Hey, and I'm Robert," and uh, we just started to chat. That was how we met. It was really, really exciting. I advertised that it was going to be really romantic in advance, and there you go. How quickly did how quickly did your acquaintanceship become a friendship? Are we friends? <laughs> Joking. Jk. Just Jk. No. See, the weird thing about this is that. That kid that came up and started chatting with me, mm -hmm. I'm really bad with names. Mm -hmm. um, I heard the name Robert Schneider for years before I met you, hmm. even though we had previously met. Oh. I met you through, well, Bill and Will mm -hmm. were always talking about you, but you, you had already moved. Bill. I hung out with you in the very same apartment, in fact. But by the time I understood your name and, well, and contacts and all that other stuff, you had moved and you were going to Centenary. That's true. And you started hanging out with... Uh, Jeff Walden. Jeff Walden. He was so amazing. And so I kind of knew you from... One Inch. And this one band, inch. There was a band called King Felix 
at the time. Very incredible band from Louisiana and from the 80s, like a, a prog uh, kind of romantic pop band. And then um, also Tales Around Town with Jeff and Bill and Will talking about you. And then one day, Bill uh, Bass had a bad reputation. You came to, I remember now you came to town and we met at, that's why I think we met at KLPI, because okay, that you had too. come to town, but I just didn't remember it. Meeting you at the quad because I mean that was just I was so just one of people. the many punk kids. But that by was that time around. I was like, wait, that's Robert's I was like, that's Robert's Night, that's Robert's I was like, you're like, he's, he's bad. That's him. And then, but we had known each other through another curve, mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. King Felix and that's Jeff. Right. That's true. We that's and right. because he came to town to, to play at the station. Yes, oh, that's right. That's all. Yeah, I and remember. Then, and course, you were like with him. I came with there him. We played because we played in a band together. Jeff and I played yeah. in a band together. Jeff Walden, that is. And that's when I officially. But before that, it was more just like hanging out. Professional. How's it going? So, oh, hey. So uh, we met each other twice. That's right. Oh, and our story loops around to the show because my band Air Sea Dolphin is playing. Yes. And on our recent uh, EP, we have a song that I wrote for Jeff Walden. Really? Dang, it all nice. moved around so nicely. That is some storytelling, my friend. Good job. Right here, see? Uh -huh. You can hear it. Thank you for asking um, a nice question that oh. made, made us have nice memories. Yeah, well, I, I, want, I want to stress the importance of friendships. I've always had a lot of acquaintances. Isolation is one of the big symptoms of, uh, of depression. And yeah. Ha having, yeah. Ver having, having buddies is, is so important. And checking on your buddies who isolate. Yes. The onus is all. People always put the onus on other people. Like, oh, let me know. Let's hang out. I'm still not good at asking people. That. Everybody should advocate for everybody. Exactly. You don't have to always advocate for yourself. We're all in this together. Yeah. Yes. But I, I imagine people are in serious. Well, I've had serious depression. Just don't see any way out. Yeah. But there is a way out. Sorry, Stephen. And music is part of it, music and friendship. Sometimes I don't listen to music for a few days if I'm depressed and in bed. And then when I listen to music again, it's like, it's like a miracle. Yeah. It's like a drug. Yeah. I'm thankful that I'm not, I don't have an addictive personality for drug drugs. Yeah. Just for music? Yeah, yeah, music is my drug. You like wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, ah, I'll take them off. Yeah, go back music and comedy and call someone who you know cares about. That's, that's, that's a good remedy. I think that it seems like you're probably uh, wrapping all of those together uh, completely accidentally in your, uh, in, in your festival. <laughs> yeah. It, it couldn't well, be that they all like fit together so perfectly into a festival. <laughs> music and talking and hopefully people will... You were talking about random meetings of friends. I always wonder like, oh man, that could be the guy. That could be the guy that I have a great friendship with. Yeah, I, I, you're can, right. I can be very shy, but people think I'm very social, but not always. Just and today I, I remind them, I always remind myself if you don't ask, things you always know. Just ask. I do have anxiety. About, uh, like, oh my god, what if my festival fails? That doesn't mean anything. This, this, this isn't the fire festival. There's not a lot of investment in it. We're just talking about mental health, sharing mental health resources. The festival freaking kicks ass already, just before it's even started. Oh man, Brandy looks so awesome. Brandy 13 is going to be like, we're all astronauts, you know, we're all holding hands on the moon. And uh, I thought about us dressing up and saying we're on a UFO or something. You, uh, you, 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 you uh, have to play dress up, right? Some of your videos are amazing. We're, we're not, we are, right? Right. Uh, thank you. We're all playing. Th there, th okay. Thank you. They're really, uh, they're really high budget. Mm -hmm. Usually, uh, not ever done with a phone. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see <laughs> what we will post uh, make some, uh, some sci-fi videos. Let's see. Is there any more questions? Is there any questions on there? Oh yes, we do have a journalist in the audience. This is a press conference. I do press conferences better than the White House. Yes. Um. Okay. So. What would you say concisely, um, maybe from each of you or just from one of you, um, would you like to see happen from this festival? What is it, your end goal? Yeah, you're right. All right, sorry. Okay, you start. Um, 
I do hope, and, and I don't think a lot of people are watching now, but I think it, it'll save on Facebook. I, I want it to bubble outside of Athens. But I, I still want it to be a, So 1010 is World Mental Health Day. I want people to always know that that's what Brain Aid Fest is. And I want it to be a... Just a regular thing. And when people see the logo, I want them to just know that there's, there's help. And there's, there's hope. My mom is my mental health hero. Um, she always just tried the next thing. And, and it's so hard when you... You might have to try eight different medicines. I just want people... I just, well, it's a cliche, but I just want one person to be... In a couple months, like, oh, I heard some, someone say at Brain Aid that it's pretty easy to go to Nucci's space and get some subsidized counseling or some subsidized psychiatric appointment. It's not even something that will be traceable. And I know nonprofits need numbers. Um, it won't be. Like I, if suicides go down and I had you know, an impact on some people's lives, it, that's not true. But I don't need to if I just put out positive energy. I, I believe in the secret. The secret sauce.